when it comes down to purchasing lights nowadays, it, I feel like it's it's confusing for a lot of people because you're looking at the basic things. You're you're splitting hairs with micromoles per joule, and your efficacy is really important. But so many of these companies you've never heard of are claiming to have these same things. So where do you where do you go? Why do you go there? And and where do you put your money in that sense? It's a big conversation. I think we should dive into because there's a lot of people who are like, what's the best light to get? And it's like, well, here's these 20 brands that I know are good. But which one in particular? Which one should you get? Is that for me? Well, we'll both. Let's start with you, Shane. Go ahead, Shane. Yeah, so I think you're right. Uh, I think we, we talked the last day about Spectrum and, you know, how Spectrum is pretty much not an issue anymore. <clears throat> and that most LED lights are providing a Spectrum that's suitable for, for growing and growing all the way in most circumstances. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, you know, you got the the efficacy, the efficiency, which things have started to level up now. So <clears throat> the worst lights that I would test would be about maybe 15 or 20% less efficient than the best lights, the most efficient lights that I test. So that, that gap between the most expensive and the, um, you know, the least expensive or the best value in terms of performance has sort of narrowed down quite a bit. And then, you know, early LEDs were beset with a lot of problems with, with reliability. And again, the cheaper LEDs seem to be very reliable and the budget brands are using drivers now, which are much more reliable than they used to be. And the whole setup that used to be with you know boxes and fans and all that kind of stuff isn't isn't required anymore because the uh, as i said they're all quite efficient so they're all running quite cool so it's uh after that it gets into really features and and long-term benefits and how long term long term are you thinking because you will get a longer life out of a more efficient uh fixture it'll run more it'll run cooler and therefore last longer and um, generally, they are built a bit better. You know, they got more protection over the LEDs, for example. Some of them have got nice lens covers over them. Um, the quality of the drivers, in particular, the, the bits and pieces around them, like the controllers and, um, you know, the dimmers and all those little bits and pieces will be a little bit higher quality on the more expensive ones. But you can... You know, it's that that gap, as I said, is is very much getting narrower. And really, it's a bit like you know, an argument about any other piece of tech. If you use it long, you know, for a long amount every day, and it, it it needs to be reliable, then it's probably spending that little bit better. You're better off spending that little bit more, rather than risking having you know your lights go down and having. Um, and, and again, you know, they're so cheap now these days, or relatively cheap, that you don't have to go for the cheapest one because the uh, the mid range ones are more affordable now. So, for all those reasons, I think it's 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 still worth paying that little bit more above the bottom level. But you really don't have to pay much of a premium o over the the very base level now to get really good light. This clip was brought to you by AC Infinity. Leaders in Garden Innovation. Use discount code the stash15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.